Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we start the meeting, as usual, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. Patriotism is not short, frenzied outbursts of emotion, but the tranquil and steady dedication of a lifetime. Thank you. Call the seventh regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Serta. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clionis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Excuse. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Here. And Wangaman. Here. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. It is time now to pledge allegiance to our beautiful country and its flag. Alderman Kittleson, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Mayor's appointments, Attorney Adams. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Alderman Gene Kittleson to be considered for appointment to the Architectural Review Board to fill the unexpired term of Alderman Jim Gisha, whose term expires on April 14, 2008. Thank you. I'd ask for a motion to suspend so Alderman Kittleson can begin working on this. Second. Motion and second to suspend. Any objection to that? And then I need a motion to confirm the appointment. Motion to confirm the appointment. Second. Second. Under discussion. Under discussion, I want to say thank you, Alderman Gisha. You did a great <laughs> job. I, uh, I think uh, it's sometimes it's just not possible to, to, to uh, meet all your obligations, but we thank you for the hard work, hard work that you did. Would you like to say something, sir? Very briefly, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, it's a great group of people, as I stated in my email. Uh, uh, wonderful folks. And Gene, uh, Alderperson Clayunas, was at all these meetings anyway, so it's a nice. Oh, pardon me, sorry. <laughs> Alderperson Kittleson. Uh, so it'll be, it should be a smooth transition. She's a real pro at this stuff, and uh, I appreciate the faith in the council in appointing me to begin with. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. President Hanna, comment? No? Okay. Any more discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is approved. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Attorney Adams. Fourth of July comments by Alderman Bauk. Please, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a brief uh, mention of the fact that I am proudest to be an American on the Fourth of July, and that is because I try to read the Declaration of Independence every year on that day, and I recommend it to the citizenry. It takes about four, maybe five minutes to read. It is an exceptional listing of why we became the country we became today, why we like elections and not coronations, and why we like uh, an independent judiciary, and why we hate taxes. All those things are rolled up in there, and it's great family reading, too. You can take those paragraphs and talk about frontiersmen and brave Americans and Barbary pirates and, and weave a great tale of American patriotism for your children. So on this great Fourth of July, I encourage you to Google Declaration of Independence and spend five minutes reading about it. Thank you, Alvin Bauk. And in addition to that, real quickly, I am 54 years old. I've heard the Star Spangled Banner many, many times. Every time I hear it, I still get goosebumps. That's how important that thing is. So thank you. Next item, public forum. Madam City Clerk. Yes, first on the list is Tom Bowers, I believe. Have you pronounced it? Mr. Bowers, can you give me your home address, please? 2120 North 36th Street. 2120 North 36th? Yes. And you will have five minutes, sir. All right. I'm here tonight to discuss the recent uh, appointment of the fire department as the ambulance carrier. And over the years, I've lived in Sheboygan now since 1964. I've been involved in some campaigns. I've served on some city boards. But I've never seen such a railroad job in my life as the 
thing that was voted on here two weeks ago, I believe. What, what has happened in Eau Claire was Eau Claire, Wisconsin had a private ambulance service years ago and they couldn't make a go of it, so they went to a public. That, as far as I know, is the only one in the city, or I should say in the state, that has done this. Now, there are other cities that have it. The reason that they have the public ambulance service is because no one else wanted it. They couldn't make any money on it. With the new council that was elected in April, I was kind of excited. We had some new members, and we lost some good members, but I figured the new ones that we elected, you know, had something on the ball. Now I know it was wrong, because now this council is known as the Hip Pocket Council. The reason I'm here today is to discuss, which is over the hill, but anyway, I just wanted to bring up some information. Some of the information that was supplied by the fire department, I'm not saying that's wrong, but I, I don't think that it was taken into consideration. Number one is medical supplies. As I recall, it was $30,000 allocated for medical supplies. I, I don't think that's enough. Insurance was $3,400 a year. That is way too low. The billing will be done, I guess, by Manitowoc. Now, Manitowoc was a, it also was done by the city, was taken over because uh, Holy Family wanted to go out of the ambulance business. So now the billing is $36,000, which may or may not be correct. But I do know this, that the billings will be <clears throat> crossed between the fire department and the ambulance department. Where are the charges going to be if you need four tires? For an ambulance, will they go to the fire department or will they go to the ambulance department? Also, in the proposal, it's three ambulances that are going to be, I believe, leased. And I think the arrangements have already been made to lease them. My concern is, I believe Orange Cross has seven ambulances. Of course, they take the the county. What happens if we have two transfers, maybe three transfers, to Green Bay, Milwaukee, or Dana Clark? Who is going to be in Sheboygan <coughs> taking the people? Also on the reimbursement. Now the figures that were supplied, and I'm somewhat, somewhat familiar with this, it's, let's just take a hospital uh, ambulance bill of $1,000, which I understand it's high now. The insurance companies are allowing approximately 50%. Medicare, I think, is even lower than that. If 50% of the people are paying, at least the hospital or the ambulance fire department with $250. But all that aside, Let's take the projected revenue. $675,235. Expenses, $479,487. Which, if I recall right, was somewhere a profit of $190,000. But where are the other ambulance people <coughs> going to come from? Uh, Orange Cross has approximately thirty-five to forty. I believe in the projections here that we were going to allow 15 firemen. So that leaves us, we're going to hire four. Where are the other 11 going to be <clears throat> expenses allocated? Let's just take the other 11 firemen at $55,000, which is very low because the 55000 projection was for new firemen. Excuse me, Mr. Bauer, your five minutes are up. Would you like the additional minute you're allowed? Please. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we now have 11 firemen. I'll use $55,000. That brings a total of $1,084,487. So 
subtracting $675,235 is a deficit of $409,252. All that said, let me back up a little bit. When I watched the two weeks ago, I believe it was, and I, uh, TV was turned on, all I could see was firemen, and I found out later they weren't from Sheboygan. A lot of them were from uh, out of town. And the local people were very upset with this because they felt that our council was intimidated by the firemen that were brought in to do this. Hmm. Our local people... Excuse me, Mr. Bauer. Uh, your minute is up. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Next on the list is Henry Capitillo. And Mr. Capitillo, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, it's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan but I'm here as a representative for Home, Inc. Okay. You will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I'm here today to encourage you to support the initiative to fund the community policing unit and support the Sheboygan Police Department in its efforts to do more proactive policing. I would encourage all members to read the 2006 Conference of Mayors Best Practices of Community Policing in Gang Intervention and Gang Violence. Look at what other communities are doing to support community policing in the, and their results. I, have, I will give the city clerk a copy of the report on CD for your information. I attended the Committee of the Whole meeting where the Sheboygan Police Department made a presentation. After their presentation, several alderpersons were critical that the police department did not identify a specific plan on how to reduce their budget, and in their analysis, they did, they did not feel that their presentation had enough numerical substance as it pertained to actual cuts. They went as far as to compare the presentation to a presentation that the Sheboygan Fire Department had made to a committee of the council and how it lacked in comparison. I heard the police report, the police department presentation, and these are some of the important facts that I ascertained from their presentation. The presentation did specifically identify areas that the police budget could generate additional revenue if these expenses would be charged to the appropriate city departments or other city entities that should be res financially responsible for these costs that are in the police budget. For example, the police dispatch budget apparently pays for up to 20 to 25 percent of dispatch attributed to Sh Sheboygan Fire Department, which is approximately between two. Two hundred to two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars of the dispatch budget. Should this expense not be the responsibility of the fire department and be included in their budget, the police budget pays for all school crossing guards, which cost the police department approximately twenty thousand dollars annually. Should not this expense be borne by the Sheboygan School District? The police department budget pays for part of the school liaison officers that are at the two high schools. Should not this expense be covered by the Sheboygan School District? If the aforementioned costs were covered by the appropriate city departments and or other city entities, it would free up approximately $315,000 that the police department could use towards their commu community policing unit. Since the Sheboygan Area School District can increase their yearly budget without the, the community outcry, then why should not they be responsible directly for these costs that directly benefit the school district, their students, families, and the community? I read in the Sheboygan Press that the Sheboygan School District budget for 2007 will increase by 3.3%. This is approximately $4.2 million. I would encourage the two former Sheboygan Area School District Board Presidents, Mayor Perez and Alderman Hanna, to start a dialogue with the Sheboygan School District to ask them to cover the previously mentioned costs that are presently being paid by the Sheboygan Police Department. I also reviewed the salaries that were published in the Thursday, June 28, 2007 Sheboygan Press article. I wholeheartedly commend the Sheboygan Press for their efforts and for their comparison with other communities as it lend, lend a better perspective on how Sheboygan ranks with the other communities. I would also like to say to the alderman who was visibly upset by the burning of a vehicle just a block away from his home that people do not fathom or understand the criminal element in the community until it touches home and it affects them personally. 
This is why I repeatedly come back to this council chambers to try to convince the older persons that there is a serious problem in the city of Sheboygan as it pertains to drugs, gangs, and crime. I know this because I, I have dealt with these problems and see them on a regular basis in the community. I cannot convey to you the feeling that I, that I get when you are asked to open a room only to find a tenant dead because someone sold, sold that person drugs and died and they did not, because they did not fully understand the repercussions of t taking these drugs. This has happened to me personally on more than one occasion. Or to see another tenant that is a nine-year veteran that is in ill health and cannot seem to be able to take care of himself, and you contact Health and Human Services only to hear that this case is marginal and they cannot do anything. Thank God for the Sheboygan Police Department who responded to a call from another veteran who I contacted to see if he could do something for this individual. The police responded to the call on Friday afternoon and the individual was taken to the St. Nicholas Hospital on a commitment order where the veteran died the following Saturday morning. The consolation that I had was that this veteran could at least die in a clean bed surrounded by individuals that cared for him and his well-being and that I would not be the individual that had to find him dead in the conditions that were indescribable. Please take time to review any additional services by the city of Sheboygan. For example, at the re at, look at the report that is compiled by the finance department for the municipal court, which apparently shows that... Henry, would you like your additional minute? Yes. Okay, go ahead. That apparently shows that it is not generating as much revenue as it did in the previous year. When the city made a decision to establish a municipal court, they were extremely optimistic and they, and they said they were going to be generating a good deal of funds for the city. Now the city is going to provide ambulance service and compete with Orange Cross. Again, the city is confident that they will be generating a lot of additional funds for the city. I just hope it does better than the municipal court. Thank you very much. Thank you. And lastly, we have, thank you, uh, Jeff Shuko. And Mr. Shuko, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, 2303 South 17th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I decided to come today to speak to everyone uh, after I had a conversation on WHBL last week, it involved uh, actually a front page article in the Sheboygan Press in regards to the uh, apparently uh, large amounts of overtime that we've been paying out. And when I ran for alderman a while back, I was, I was doing a little research and a little digging around my, myself in, into that sort of thing, and I more or less ran, ran on a format of of uh, doing cost time analysis and taking a look at all, not just the police department, but all the departments and uh, where the monies were going and what could be done to help things along. And in, in regard to that, I had mentioned the eight day work week, which that work schedule, which I could see was generating an additional 34 days off a year paid for every officer on the street and that amount of additional time off is putting a stress on the department in essence. It's keeping uh, officers that are on duty shorthanded. Uh, the excessive amount of time off then leaves a lower level of service for the citizens and it's kind of a snowballing effect. That's where uh, having civilian positions fill in where possible I thought was a very good idea. But I uh, no sooner got off the phone and a retired officer called up and started throwing a bunch of disinformation around about how I should, we should do our homework and that sort of thing. Well, I'm afraid I, I'm afraid I did. And I had also contacted, as a result of that conversation, uh, Representative Van Akron. And this was, uh, I had contacted uh, uh, Representative Van, Van Akron, in regard to the Sheboygan Police Department's attempt to bypass our Second Amendment rights. They had recently charged three teens with disorderly conduct for attempting to play airsoft combat in a city park. I don't know if any of you people are aware of those guns, but the public can mistake them for a weapon, I suppose, but they're toys. 
In my view, this is nothing more than an attempt to set a precedent so law-abiding citizens who legally carry unconcealed can be charged with the same offense if someone, however uninformed, calls them reporting someone with a gun. The police department has just recently stated this very fact on WHBL publicly. As civil servants, these individuals need to be reminded of who they serve and who dictates policy. Public trust is something that is earned, not just given away. And I'll explain this next comment because people may not like it, but I, I wrote, acting like New Age Nazis is not their place as civil servants and they should be reprimanded for their arrogant behavior. Sadly, this is not the first time this kind of behavior has been observed and further demonstrates the need for oversight of this department's activities and policies. I further demand my Second Amendment rights take precedent over local ordinances, which uh, Mr. Van Akron had assured me the state law does take precedent over local laws, and he provided me with some additional information. I didn't file a complaint, however, the very next day after I appeared on WHBL, I had a van in front of my house parked with a uniformed officer doing surveillance on me. And I looked at this as a real waste of money. Plain and simple. I'm here to help. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> I wish to thank the citizens for addressing the council tonight. Next item on the agenda is hearings. First hearing is amend the city ordinance, amend the zoning of property located at 507 Washington Court from class NR6 to class NC commercial classification. And the second hearing is amend the zoning of the Wells Fargo parking lot from class NR6 to class NC which is neighborhood commercial classification. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council with respect to any of these two hearings? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council? Is there anyone? There being none, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to close. Second. Motion and second to close hearings. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. Next item is consent agenda 7 1 through 723. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Wagaman. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, move we pull forward document number 7-22. For a separate vote, sir? For a separate vote. For a separate uh, vote, please mm -hmm. do. The uh, reason being that myself and Alderman Kittleson are members of this insurance group. And uh, with uh, respect to this item, we will both uh, abstain when it comes to a vote. OK. And it is a. A real problem, I understand, the medical benefits, and, but this year our insurance has gone up $120 a month. Uh, we'll be starting next year, and I'm sure that many of the retirees out there, such as myself, find this to be an excessive burden, although I'm, I'm not blaming the city for it because I know it's just the, the way things are. And uh, it's, a, it's a real sad state of affairs, I, I, I must say that. Alderman Wagon, would you like to make a motion to accept and adopt report of committee and put the resolution upon his passage, and then you can abstain? Would that be yes, okay? Sir. Okay, is there a second to that? Second. Second. Under discussion, on just 722, two aldermen will abstain. There being none, please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Epstein. We have 13 ayes and two abstentions. Motion carries. Now we will move on to 7 1 through 7 23 with the exception of 7 22. Is there any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, 
Wangaman, aye. and Boren. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 724 through 726 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 727. We will hold for action on 742. Please make that notation. 728 through 740 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 741 by Alderman Meyer, Hannah, and Boren, approving the rental of police officers' ATVs for the use of the 4th of July. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second, under discussion. Alderman Bout, did you wish to speak? No, sir. Okay. There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 15 ayes. 742 by Alderman Meyer, Ryan, Montemayor, and Heidemann authorizing entry into a contract for the boardwalk reconstruction on the west side of the river from Rotary Riverview Park to the 8th Street Bridge. Need a motion to suspend on 742 and 727. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask for motion to suspend. Is there any objection to that? There being none, need a motion to put both resolutions upon their passage. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a couple questions. Uh, when was it determined that uh, this boardwalk had to be replaced? Uh, I know I've been down there a few times to some of the restaurants down there and walked on the boardwalk. Is it in that ill repair that it has to be done? Uh, and when would the construction begin? Uh, hopefully, it, if when it does begin, it's not going to be an inconvenience to the businesses down there. And I see the price tag with all of the add-ons in here, if my math is correct, as $266,392.45. And that's another concern of mine. If, you know, could this, with the budget, budget condition that we're in going into for, for 2008, uh, and, of course, even this year, uh, is there a possibility that this could be put off, or is this absolutely necessary that this be done now with that dollar figure? Thank you. I will call on uh, Alderman Rinfleisch, but uh, Mr. Beeb will be ready to answer that. Alderman Rinfleisch? Okay. Mr. Mayor, um, I guess if, uh, an additional question for me for the committee as well uh, is all the other riverfront work we've done involves the pouring of the concrete. Uh, I much well made it as picturesque, but much more durable. Um, have the has it been estimated what that would cost uh, to re replace the boardwalk with so we can avoid having to do 300000 on up every several years as well? That's the other question that would happen. Okay. Mr. Bebo, would you please come forward? Paul, Ed, do you have some, something to add to? Okay, let's uh, take the, Mr. Bebo first, then Ms. Anders. Yeah, I think Paulette can add to this as well because her office has been involved. But I can, I can at least answer some of the questions in terms of the material concrete versus the wood that we chose. The wood that we chose is, is um, much more durable than what you have now. It's pretty much what we have is pressure treated lumber out there. What we're looking at doing is, a, is actually a, a, a rainforest type of wood. It's an EPA. Um, it's uh, certified rainforest, so it's, it's uh, coming from Brazil. And this wood is being used on the Atlantic City boardwalk. It's very durable. It has a very long life expectancy, anywhere from 40 to 50 years we're expecting to get out of this product. Um, this the budget, in terms of this project, it was identified two years ago already in the capital improvements programming as part of the overall South Pier District improvements. Last year already we had the first phase of it where we've improved all of the, sh all of the lighting along the boardwalk. This is now the second phase of redoing that decking. It is becoming a hazard. Uh, we do get uh, concerns with trips and falls out there. The proposed project schedule on this as well is to occur this summer. Um, we've talked with the contractors. We had a pre-bid meeting, and what they'll be doing is we'll be, all they can do is tear off as much as they can replace in a day. So at the end of the day, of the construction day, the boardwalk will be reopened. So it will be done in sections as they move along. Um, 
I guess that that's where I can answer any other questions. Okay. Paul, that can be. You, you will just hold on. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, rainforest wood is what's going to be used. Correct, but this is a certified this is certified rainforest wood that it's not coming from the rainforest. It's coming from Brazil. It's 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 certified by the government of Brazil. It's certified by the government of the United States. It's being imported. Uh, we we research this very uh, stringently to make sure everything is above board. The company that we're getting it is out of Milwaukee, who's supplying this. We've already purchased that uh, at, at the at the previous meeting. We, the city pre-purchased it. That way, we save on. And the taxes we saved about mm -hmm. a couple. Uh, the, my second question would be with uh, Alderman Weinfleisch said, you know, uh, what about concrete? Rainforest is, sounds like a very valuable resource that we're using in Sheboygan. The, the, the problem with concrete is, is that the, the, the substructure for the boardwalk is designed to hold the wood. If we went with concrete, then we're adding very expensive, redoing the substructure, adding. It's, it's basically, it's suspended over the river. So the understructure, which is some steel timbers and some, and some wood timbers that support the current boardwalk, would have to be redone to support the weight of that concrete. Okay, okay. Alderman Clayton. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, my question, I'm trying to remember back when it was built. My question is, how old is it? When was it built? It was built in the early, early 80s. It's approximately 25, 30 years old. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Renfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, sorry for the tough questions, but follow up on the certified. It's certified what? Certified renewable resource. It's not coming from the actual jungles. It's farmed. Is that correct? Or explain the certified to people at home. Correct, and it, it's not, you're right, it's not from the jungles necessarily where it's, it's, it's virgin timber. It, 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 is a, it is a resource that is, is a, it's a lumber that is, is readily available and it's marketed and it's, it's, it's controlled in terms of how much can be cut and, and where it can be cut and how much can be sold in a, in a year. It's, it's not as if we're going out and getting teak wood from, from the Brazilian rainforest. It's, it's just coming from the country. Uh, Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. First of all, I wouldn't support concrete. The whole term of board walk kind of takes away from the possibility, in my view, of the ambiance of having actual boards on a boardwalk. But second, the, uh, we already own the, the lumber, so that's really, in, in my opinion, a moot point, I guess. Uh, did you look at, so this is kind of just a follow-up maybe for the future, did you look at any sort of extruded material, which you see a lot of with people on decks and stuff, and second, and maybe this is a question for Paulette, this was already in the plans. Can she describe where the funding came from? Is it general fund money, TIF money, et cetera, et cetera? Thank you. In, in, ter in terms of the composite or plastic lumber, again, it doesn't have much structural quality. So then what you need to do is, is add so much under support structure to support that, that quality. And we just had that at Maywood, for instance, on their deck. They went with the plastic lumber, and lo and behold, uh, the understructure was had to be three times the, the structure normally needed for for a deck. Okay, thank you, Paulette. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Um, the the amount, the budgeted amount for that project was um, general fund. We did have it in the capital improvements program. It had been put off. Um, it's in need of repair. As um, David said, we are staging it so that those businesses stay open and in business. Um, again, we did look at a variety of materials over a couple of years. When Tom Holton was still here, I remember we did talk about the, you know, the plastic decking. The, the jury is still out on that. We weren't very confident in that material as of yet. And um, so I know that I think um, Ryan Sasma from Engineering did travel up to um, Superior and took a look at the decking that they've used. They're, they're happy with it. And so we move forward with that chosen material. Hold on a minute. Vice President Board. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Paulette, when is, this, when is this actually scheduled to uh, 
begin the construction? In July. I think that's why we're asking for a suspension tonight so that we can be begin it. We've already, we have some of the wood. It's been, it'll be stockpiled or is stockpiled at the armory. That's the only thing that could throw the budget off by a little, but we'll still stay within budget is mobilization for that material. Okay, I don't want to dwell on um, inconveniencing the businesses, but why couldn't this be done end of September through mid-October after Labor Day when the traffic is going to be you know, just a snail's pace compared to what it is now. I, you know, I, I don't even want to inconveni inconvenience the tourists there this summer. Uh, why not wait until after Labor Day when you still got, it's going to be colder, but there's not going to be traffic down there before the snow flies. I think a part of it is, and I can't answer that fully, but um, what I'm aware of is it, it is that wood and um, paying for the wood and kind of and staging it and bringing it in when it's available. If we can't get it from the lumber yard when it is available, then that delays the project. So if we can start now, stage it with the wood, we can get it completed before the winter season. Okay, thank you. That concern was, was also expressed before uh, Vice President Bourne, and I believe uh, that the boardwalk will be constructed in sections. And every section that, that's ribboned off, so to speak, will have a detour for the, uh, for the residents and tourists. <coughs> Thank you, Paulette. Okay. We are voting on 742 and 727. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? No. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 743, we are going to hold for 756. Please make that notation. 748, 744 through 748 lies over. Uh, on 746, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, move to suspend. Is there a second to suspend? Second. Second. Any objection to that? There being none, please proceed. I would move uh, that the uh, resolution be passage. Motion. Motion. Se is there a second? Second. second. Under discussion. Alderman Bout. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I, uh, I agree with the decision to suspend the rules. I think this spends out, has been out there long enough and it's time to move it along. I appreciate Mr. Capitillo's suggestions uh, that he brought this evening. Those were some good suggestions with some numbers tied to them and some alternatives. Uh, I'm encouraged by the rapidness with which the SPD and the unions have responded after our, common, after our Committee of the Whole meeting last Monday. It's been a good dialogue this week and I think there's a good faith effort underway for aldermen, uh, and the unions and the SPD to sit down and find good faith long-term solutions uh, that will result in long-term efficiencies. Uh, like on the 4th of July, I've heard from several constituents over the past week saying, for goodness sake, why on the 4th of July are we paying sworn officers $130, or that's what it will cost the city, $130 an hour uh, to have sworn officers on the parade route that day? Some of these officers taking in over the course of the year $12,000, $18,000, $19,000 a year. On the 4th of July, we're going to spend, or it's going to cost us about $23,000 on one day. We can use private security and save $17,000 that day alone. That's 10% of, uh, of the challenge that Chief Kirk has for this year of that $175,000. So on one day, we can make a solution like that. I hope that the unions and, uh, and Chief Kirk and the aldermen will come back with great solutions like that that keep our budget flat, if not shrink them, because if there's any doubt in anyone's mind what, uh, what the voters think about our tax levy, uh, they voted this week when the population statistics came out and people are moving to the outer cities and moving out of the city of Sheboygan because they like the proximity, they love the lake, they love the restaurants, they love what we have, they just don't want to pay our taxes. They don't think it's worth it to live that close. So I, uh, I'm going to vote no this evening, but for a very specific reason. I want to be proven wrong. I want Chief Kirk and his team to work so well between now and the August budget time frame that they're going to be able to come back with great ideas in August and say, Alderman Bauck, you were wrong, and here's our great list of savings. So I look forward to seeing that list and uh, look forward to the great solutions from the police department and the unions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Alderman Bauck. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I also am voting no on this. Um, 
two, three years ago when Alderman Shusha was chairperson of Public Protection and Safety, she brought up many of these items for budget, to look at in the budget process and possibly eliminate some of these expenditures. And at that time, we were told no by Chief Kirk. And one of them was having a private firm do the parade routes and the picnics. And we were told no. And I'm hoping that this time, seeing that they came forward and said they're going to change their, their way of doing business, I hope that they will look into these other cost-saving measures. But until I see them, I cannot support this. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Greenflesh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, a question has come up within Public Protection and Safety Committee multiple times, and this is a question then for uh, Assistant City Attorney, <laughs> while you're sitting with us today. Um, my understanding is, is that the state statutes only allow a sworn officer to stop and redirect traffic. Is that correct? That is correct. So technically, we can't hire a private firm to stop and direct traffic unless we're uh, breaking the state statutes, is that correct? Specifically direct traffic, you have to have a sworn officer. Okay. To do that. And the exception for school crossing guards is what? It's in the state statutes. And it's the one, one example given the state statutes. So uh, I agree. I think there are a lot of ways that we can save. Uh, I think um, these areas that we, we like to talk about and bring up are good areas. We need to partner up with our state representatives to get those laws changed. Uh, we can't just simply decide it's bad policy on our own. We know it's bad policy. We need to be able to, to make a strong statement and, and go to where those changes can be affected. Uh, second of all, um, I understand the frustrations of, of hearing consistently no within this department. Uh, I'm uncomfortable voting one department uh, an exemption to what we're trying to do, and that is to control the taxes throughout. Um, and not say that any one department is more important than other departments in this, in this city. However, if people are moving out and they're voting with their feet because it may, it may be taxes, but it may be safety issues. And having driving around the city all day as part, part of my job, I see those safety issues all the time. I see you know, drug deals in broad daylight in, in some of our heaviest trafficked areas. I see uh, property crimes with vandalism and with garbage being tossed in people, people's property that aren't theirs. These are quality of life issues as well. And I think that this community policing is one of the best ways that we can partner with our departments that we're looking at working with instead of being dictatorial towards them. So for this year, I'm gonna, I will uh, vote to support this one. Um, I, however, I, I urge the department to, to look deep to find out other ways that we can continue to find cost savings so that the reasons why people are leaving, we eliminate. One, the crime is controlled, and two, our taxes are, are the, the line is held on that. So it's an effort that we have to work together with our police department and not dictate to them. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Reinflesch. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman Reinflesch. And I agree that we need to look into long-term solutions. And with budget time coming up sooner than we think, we're going to be dealing with that very quickly. But we can't forget the reason why we're here tonight. It's not because the, the chief of police asked us to give him money. It's because we got 63 documents sent to public protection, safety, and finance asking us to find the money somewhere. And I was looking through these, these documents. I have 63 of them right here. I was looking at them. One of them stood out to me because what comes out from, uh, from the alderman's mouth a lot is that we need the trust from the people. And it's just a few sentences I want to read from Jeff Miller, stating that he usually doesn't take the time to write these letters as he feels it is usually a waste of time and that it's been his experience that politicians will always be just that, politicians. They will tell you what you want to hear, but will do whatever they want regardless of the citizens' concerns. This latest move to indefinitely suspend these two critical units is one of those worst tragedies that he has seen happen as a result of politicians being politicians. This is the reason why we need to do this tonight. There's no other reason. The people want us to. That's why. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderbilt. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. When this all started, remember, Chief Kirk decided to stop these particular uh, uh, programs so that he would have the money for general fund over time, social security, retirement, patrol, regular social security, retirement, communication, social security, retirement, 
CID, Social Security, and retirement. And he chose to cover those by stopping these programs. Now, he's a very intelligent man. He earns lots of money to figure this out. And I will bet before the end of the year, he can find other ways of funding these particular things other than community policing and street crimes. I'm going to vote no. Any further discussion? <clears throat> I, uh, I want to make some comments myself. I, I would ask the council uh, to, to work with me. This is a, uh, a management decision. Uh, Chief Kirk and I have discussed this budget. Uh, the proper time next year would be to allow an increase in overtime if that projection is, is so made then. Uh, to start spinning wheels in the middle of a budget year uh, can be dangerous for, for a lot of departments. And it, as people like to say, a precedent is established. What's to keep another department from coming and asking for the same thing? Um, it, it's important that, it be, that you allow me as, as the, the executive of the city to work with department heads uh, and, and uh, resist the temptation of getting beyond that little line of micromanaging. Uh, you hold me accountable for that budget. I ask you to hold me accountable for that budget. But if that budget is going to be changed mid-year several times, um, that may not be a good thing. So again, I, I, I support the police department. Chief Kirk and I have had this discussion before. We've talked about putting together an additional plan where we buy, whereby we increase uh, street crimes, in particular for drugs, in particular for uh, crimes that are being committed out in the community by, by, by city residents and perhaps non-city residents. I also wanted to address the issue of the, uh, the high taxes Obviously, and I say this with utmost respect, obviously the town of Sheboygan and the town of Wilson can afford to, lower ta to have lower taxes. They don't spend $10 million on just their police department because the county provides that. 33% of that budget provided by you on top of that. So obviously they can provide lower taxes. They don't have a, 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 a man fire department. It's a volunteer. Of course they can cut taxes. And the, the point I'm trying to make is that when some, somebody says they move into another town because they pay less taxes, you better believe it. That's what's happening. It may be some crime, but it's also the big factor is they're moving because they can afford to pay lower taxes because all of us are paying those taxes. And the people who live just outside the border, a skip away, can still come in, use our parks, use our streets, use everything there is, all the amenities and all the services for free. How do we prevent that? I don't think that we can. I really don't think that we can. But that is the dynamic that's occurring now out there. And it's not just happening in Sheboygan. It's happening throughout the state and other states. People have figured out that when, for example, Sheboygan is landlocked. We're landlocked to the east, the lake. We can't build there. I tried, but we can't. We can't go west. Culver is there in I-43. We can't go south, town of Wilson. We can't go north, town of Sheboygan. So we're landlocked. Our budget is a lot bigger, I guarantee you, than the town of Sheboygan, town of Wilson, and the village of Colder. Of course they can, they can afford to provide uh, lower taxes. People have figured that out. What's the solution? I don't know. But what I want to point out is, is, there, is that a main reason for people moving out? Absolutely. I hear it all the time. People tell me that. People say, I'd be stupid to live in the city. Now, I'd be worried. I think I told Mike Kinsel that I'd be worried if they were leaving the town and taking their homes with them, because then we don't have the tax base. But the homes are staying. We do have, for, for our benefit, a new movement of people moving into the waterfront, the condos. It's slow, but it's going to take fire and it's going to grow. We, we have that happening. Uh, I, I predict that some of, that, uh, some of those people that are moving out will be re eventually replaced. Now, this is a trend, mind you, that has occurred since 2002. It hasn't ended because the next, the next uh, census is 2010. So it's, it's been occurring. For, for, for quite a while, and people have figured out. It doesn't, doesn't take much to figure out that if, you, know, if uh, you move outside the city limits, there's some benefits to that, and there's some benefits to living there and coming into the city. Alderman Bouch, you have a comment, sir? Thank you, Your Honor. I had one last thought based on what uh, Alderman Reinfleisch and Alderman Vanderweel said, and that is uh, I got conflicting counsel on uh, about those same state statutes, and I, I was counseled that we could put non-sworn officers on the street, but if I am wrong, 
Uh, I would encourage, if I'm getting bad counsel, I would encourage those 63 citizens that wrote those letters, and I would encourage every citizen in Sheboygan to write a letter to State Senator Leibum and to Terry Van Akron asking them to help us save our community policing units by changing that very silly statute that says we can't have fine, decent uh, rental security or citizens that have been through the police academy stand watch at our 4th of July parade. Let's flood their offices and say save our community policing units. We need the money for better causes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Alderman Bauer. We have Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Perez. Uh, assistant Assistant to City Attorney, it's easier to say, look at it in paper than say, is there anything stopping the police department from swearing people in for one day or for one hour or for a half a day in the statutes of the state of Wisconsin? In the statutes? Correct. No, there would be contractual issues to deal with. But right, but from the statute standpoint, you could do that. That's, I'm not saying that to, to uh, rebut the, uh, the police department request here. I'm just saying there are opportunities like that. We just heard, oh, you can't do it, it's in the statute. We gotta fight our representatives. When in fact, you can do it in a little different way. Thinking outside of what traditionally was no you can't or somebody telling you yes you can, there's a middle ground here. And my hope, as I said last week, is I'm, I'm voting for this money. But this is the last time I'll vote for this money. And in the hopes of just this little scenario right here, that there is a little middle ground. It isn't just no, you can't, or yes, you can. It's right there in the middle, and I'm, I'm hoping that with the discussions that, that I've seen starting to percolate, that we don't have to go to the route of a consultant, because frankly, if we can't fix it this time, that's our only choice, in my opinion. And I, and I will put the piece of paper in the IBM Selectric and type out the resolution calling for it. But, but please, don't look at it as black and white. This is just one example of there actually is a middle ground. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. We will call the vote on 7, what was it, 7, 46. Please call the vote. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? No. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. 11 eyes, 4 no's. Motion carries 749 through 751 to be referred. Report of committee 6, 752 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7479 based on the applicant's non-cooperation with the committee. Vice President Bourne. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I recommend that the report of committee be put upon its passage. Accepted and adopted. Motion is second under discussion. Uh, is Nicole M. Lewandowski here tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Please proceed. Uh, it was a unanimous decision of the Law and Licensing Committee to uh, 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 deny the uh, license based on non-cooperation with the committee. Uh, Ms. Lewandowski was given two opportunities to appear before the committee. Uh, second one by certified letter, and she did not appear either time. So I recommend that we deny. Okay. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Serta, Aye. Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 753 by finance, recommending filing various documents. Doesn't have your name on it, but we need a motion to accept and adopt, President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to accept and adopt. Second. Motion is second. 753, accept and adopt. Under discussion. Alderman Clayton. Thank you, Your Honor. I have explanation on number three, RC number 780708. Yeah. President Hanna. Yes, thank you. Uh, this was a request. Uh, the money had originally uh, been approved uh, for our visitors from Germany. 
And so this should go back into the general funds, and if it's to be approved, it needs to come back out through that motion. Okay. Anything else? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 754, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7168, based on the applicant's non-cooperation with the committee, the record of violations related to the license activity, and the applicant's status as a repeat law violator. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second, under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Is uh, Tiffany Stauber here tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Please proceed. Uh, again, it was a unan unanimous decision by the uh, committee to deny based on the applicant's non-cooperation mm -hmm. with the committee. Again, this uh, applicant had two opportunities to appear before the committee, second one by certified letter. She did not show up before the committee. Uh, she also had a record of violations related to the license activity and the applicant's status as a repeat law violator. Okay. Any more discussion? <clears throat> There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Serta. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. And Heidemann. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 755 by the Special Committee on Risk Management making a favorable recommendation regarding the rental of, a, of the police officer's ATVs for the use on the 4th of July for patrol on the lake of the Lake Michigan beachfront and other law enforcement purpose as needed for $15 for the day in accordance with the proposed ATV rental form agreement. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be mm -hmm. accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Balk. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have a question about how long we've been doing this. I think this is a great idea. Is this think, something new or? I think second year. Second year. Co second year. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to commend the, uh, the members of the police department for coming up with what a great innovative solution is. They need mobility on that day. They need to get around. It's a great idea, and I appreciate them uh, volunteering or, or basically volunteering their personal vehicles. Thank you, Alderman Bout. President Hatt? Yes, I uh, just wanted to address uh, Alderman Bout's uh, statement this has been an excellent program one year history um, you know they stepped forward and it just allowed them to keep us safer mm -hmm. on the fourth quite frankly trying to get along in that sand is not easy so these machines are, are very uh, handy tools Alderman Meyer thank you your honor and I would just like to say that this is a huge cost savings to the city because we cannot afford to buy our own ATVs and these officers are bringing their own personal vehicles for this $15 a day, that's a good deal, I would say. Anything else? There being none, please call the roll. Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Wangaman, Boren, Bauk, Serta, Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committees, 8. 7.56, and, and uh, we held 7.43. We will act on 7.56 first by finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 207 budget with a recommendation to select med tech and a, notion, and a notation of commendation for the fire department's effort to be 5,000 per unit under estimates. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion that we accept and adopt. Motion and second, under discussion. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I brought, up, <clears throat> I brought up during the Finance Committee meeting, and I'm not going to make a motion, but I just want the uh, council and the citizens to know that I'm going to be keeping an eye on this. If it does come to fruition that we do not lease these vehicles and they are, and they are purchased at a cost of uh, over $400,000, and, it does, and if it does end up coming from the Motor Vehicle Fund, uh, we receive 5% uh, to 5.25%, depending on the current interest rates, uh, interest on that money in the Motor Vehicle Fund. So if it does, in fact, come from the Motor Vehicle Fund, and it is a purchase, uh, I'm going to bring up in finance 
as I brought up the other day, that the fire department will have to repay this $415,000 with interest. I think it's only fair. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Further discussion? Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to ask the question, I guess, why uh, there's a difference for one between 743 and 756 in the dollar amount. Um, I imagine there's some supplies or something in there that's a difference. Mr. Gebhardt. The question is, why is there a difference in the amounts in 743 and 756? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, there is some additional equipment in there that besides the uh, three ambulances themselves that the fire department will need, I think I include uh, defibrillators and radios and, and other equipment that that will be needed that will be uh, brought in under future contracts from different vendors. Follow-up question? Alderman Marshall. Thank you, Eric. So I might understand, are these fully equipped, partially equipped ambulances at those prices? Or what? I might have to turn what to the fire department there? to give you more of a detail of what's included in the vehicles themselves. I'm not okay. that familiar with that. I would just like to know what other dollar amount is following behind this number, or is this the number that we're going to have delivered right. to us? Again, I don't have a listing with me of all that detail. I don't know if uh, Deputy Chief okay. Sharp might. Or we'll, we'll ask uh, Chief Lestusky in a minute. Uh, Alderman Manny, you're next. Do you have a question for... Mr. Gebhardt, please yeah, do, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my question is, do we plan to uh, follow a depreciation schedule on these vehicles, and what's the life expectancy? Is that determined yet? We do want to keep a fair and, a, and accurate accounting of expenses vis-a-vis uh, -vis revenues, and I wonder how that's going to work out at this point. Right now, there is the question of how the vehicles will be financed if they were uh, to continue with the initial here that we're doing with uh, having it in the motor vehicle fund. Uh, yes, there would be de depreciation on the vehicles. There would be a replacement factor in the rates. Uh, if it, we go with leasing as the alternative, uh, then, of course, there would not be any depreciation. It would just be the lease payments. Do we have a life expectancy how long we would plan to own and operate these vehicles? My understanding seven years. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, right, Chief, so we'll, we'll get we'll get that, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Alderman Vice President Boren, do you have a question for Mr. Gibbard or for uh, Chief Lestas? I have another comment. Okay. You want you want to go? Sure. Vice Thank President Boren. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I think all of the council members have a sheet tonight. Uh, Sheboygan Fire Department ambulance procurement proposal with a lot of numbers on it. Uh, it would have been nice if all four of these companies that are mentioned. If we would have seen something, something on that company's letterhead with these numbers on it, uh, we don't have anything other than these numbers on a piece of paper stating that, for example, MedTech is locked in at 138,395. We've got nothing on their letterhead that says that. And speaking about professional presentations, it would have been much more professional on the fire department's part to have something with each company on their letterhead saying that that price is locked in. We don't have that. We've got a sheet of paper, and that's all we've got. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Alderman uh, for Hassel, for Mr. Gephardt, yeah. please do. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Rich, could you explain the technicalities of why we're providing this authorization on the likely plan, or at least everybody's leaning towards leasing? Could you explain that? Certainly. Uh, after discussions with the fire department, uh, we realized that the leasing option, which is new to the city, to, to proceed on, on vehicles, that there's uh, many different areas that we need to look into. Uh, the committee did want us to have three different proposals in. Uh, at the same time, there was a need to expedite the contract so that the construction of the vehicles could start on the assembly line. And uh, what we proposed here is what we've done before, like with ordering buses is to utilize the motor vehicle fund to be able to get that contract, that order out, uh, even though the funding may come from somewhere else, such as the buses, you know, may, funding may come from uh, federal grants later on. But this would basically uh, allow the contract to be let to start the construction so that the timetable is not held back, uh, and at the same time give us um, time to look at the financing options here of of leasing and to get multiple proposals. Follow up? 
Alderman Marshall. So basically, this resolution is saying MedTech, go build these ambulances. We'll figure out whether we're going to lease them or buy them. Correct. Yeah, that option of financing could be answered after this. Okay. And oh, that's a question. You went. Why are we waiving the the formal bid process in this case? It's a fairly large sum of money. Well, we, again, I, I imagine it's a time constraint, but I, I guess I want to pose that question. Why are we waiving the formal bid process for and such again, a large dollar amount? might have to turn to the fire department on that. I know these are specialty vehicles. Uh, a lot of times you get into these areas, uh, you, you don't have um, multiple vendors. I know in this case there were four proposals received, but yes, there would be a, a time um, element again with that if we were going through the formal process because we'd have to allow people a period of weeks before they make the proposals after a formal opening and evaluation of that. So that would take more weeks to, to go through the formal process. Could you explain the actual bid process that took place here that gave us these four sets of numbers? Again, the fire department, Deputy Chief Sharp, I think was uh, had the responsibility of, of obtaining those from the vendors. Okay. Alderman Heidemann for Mr. Gephardt. Um, so we're going to we're going to vote on establishing uh, five hundred and forty thousand dollars, so somebody can build an ambulance for us, but we still might be able to lease it. Okay, that would be the appropriation, and that would include the other auxiliary equipment also. Thank you, Mr. Gephardt. Chief Lestusky. Who would like to go first, Alderman? Mm. Mr. Mayor, yes. uh, th thank you and members of council. I would ask that uh, Deputy Chief Sharp be allowed to come up and answer questions since he's the point person on this project. I need a motion to open the floor. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Deputy Chief. Okay. Who wants to go first? Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Deputy Chief Sharp, how many bids were you asked to procure? Three. How many did you get? Four. Thank you. Uh, the bid that happens to be the lowest, is it not about $10,000 less than your estimates in your proposal? Actually, our estimates in the proposal for a, an ambulance built on this Chevrolet 4500 series chassis was approximately $143,000. So it's about $9,000 based on the prepaid price. Uh, with the, yeah, looking at the prepaid okay. price, correct. So uh, we we commended you in our resolution for being five thousand dollars under each unit, but actually it's more closer to ten. Thank you. Uh, MedTech, you have some experience with, correct? MedTech uh, Ambulance Company is owned by the Pierce Corporation. That's the same builder that we've used for our majority of our fire trucks for a number of years. Yes. The uh, the process because we are looking to waive the competitive bidding process, and a question has arisen tonight as to documentation of these numbers being accurate. Uh, what, as far as actual quotes from these vendors to hold them to these numbers, what do you have from these vendors? I actually had a proposal. This one that I happen to have with me is the MedTech proposal. I had one that was similar in size from all four of these vendors. Uh, before we even got to this point, all of this information was shared with Kim Verhelst and we reviewed it in his office. Thank you. Uh, final question is, um, has to do with um, uh, defibrillator. Some talk in the committee about that, uh, about the inability to get a certain, I believe, 12 lead defibrillator because of some FDA issues. And it might be helpful for you to express to the public that that is your, what you have discovered with that and what there, path you're following. There was a Thank hold. Uh, MedTech Physio Control would be the vendor on that. And there was a hold for a period of time uh, for them not to be able to do business. It wasn't a defect in product or anything like that. It was something to do with other regulations. Uh, that has since been lifted for the 12 lead defibrillator monitors, so they are currently available. And I've been in touch with their representative and have the paperwork in place and have started to secure the pricing information from them. Just as a final follow-up, I'm sorry. Um, the price, the, in, it's my understanding that the intention of the ambulance when delivered, which we don't have to pay for until they're delivered, is is that uh, they would be an all-in price. So when we're looking at uh, whatever numbers these are versus what we're, what we're uh, projecting to either lease or, or lend to ourselves, and an excellent suggestion by, by Alderman Bourne of the finance meeting 
uh, that met no resistance whatsoever, and that was to uh, charge interest if, in fact, we do use the motor vehicle fund. But um, these would be basically turnkey with the monies that we have allocated. That's correct. The, Thank you. The difference between the purchase prices or the acquisition price for each one listed and the amount of money that's needed is for the other peripheral equipment that's needed. Alderman Clayus. Thank you, Your Honor. A question for Deputy Sharp. What is the life expectancy of these vehicles? The life expectancy of the vehicles, I would say, is a minimum of 10 years. I think one of the big factors, just like it would be with anyone's personal vehicle, life expectancy is somewhat driven by mileage. Right now, the service is, is uh, set up that we would handle 911 calls in the city limits. If that were to change and we were out to go to the surrounding communities or even do transports out of the city, the, obviously the miles would increase. That may have some impact on the life expectancy. But I would believe that a 10-year figure, even going into the surrounding areas and some transport work to other facilities out of town is, is accurate. Thank you. President Hanna. Well, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chief. Uh, two questions, really. Did you uh, speak with anybody at Orange Cross uh, in going over the specs and, and bounce ideas around? And secondly, uh, under the current proposal for coverage, uh, transport's going to be incidental to what we're doing. The primary transport's going to be Orange Cross? At this point, yes, the primary transport out of the city would be Orange Cross. I did speak with uh, people from Orange Cross um, off the record over a period of time uh, just about what uh, ambulances they use and I spoke with one person in particular who's familiar with their purchasing process and how they spec ambulances and things to look for. Um, I know that some of their most recent purchases of ambulance have been MedTechs and they're very satisfied with that. Uh, in, wor in working on this project I also spoke with representatives of the Green Bay Fire Department and the Oshkosh Fire Department and went to both of their departments and looked at their vehicles and their most recent purchases are also MedTech ambulances. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to clarify, are these fully equipped turnkey ambulances or, or is there additional no, equipment? I'm hearing both, I think. Peripheral equipment, the mm -hmm. term was used. Uh, thank you. Um, in our proposal, the lease amount covered fully equipped ambulances. This is a portion of that based on the fact that the vendors are not the same and when we put these things all together we could we can meld them into a lease package that covers both equipment and vehicles but for the purpose of ordering this out from this vendor we need to have a uh, specific purchase order for and a specific amount for, for that portion of it. When this is all combined, there'll be a total amount not to exceed the amount that um, is listed in the other part, portion of this document. Um, and those lump numbers could either be a lease package or out of the motor vehicle fund, whatever the wish of the, the council is at that point. But at that point, when those things are put together, then there will be one package price that will be a it'll be a completed project. So we won't be exceeding the 540,000 for ambulance equipment or related equipment? Correct. Okay, can you explain, I asked Richard, and I think he deferred to you, why we are waiving the official bid process or the formal bid process? Well, a portion of that is the time constraints and the fact that this has been pushed out for, for a number of, of weeks and the process that we've had to go through in order to do that. Um, Deputy Chief Sharp is very diligent that, and knows these vendors. We've looked at these, the packets on each, as he said, on each individual product and each individual vendor is about this thick. And that was based on numerous visits. Vendors came in with equipment. We had a committee look at this equipment. Uh, we've gone to other cities. We've talked to other cities to, to attest to quality and, and costs and everything else associated with the purchase and essentially other than them not being sealed it's what Deputy Chief Sharp did. He brought in all these vendors they all knew were competitive in that we're going to each of, uh, of these vendors trying to find the best price and the best product and they put together those packages and then he reviewed those with the city purchasing agent because they're very detailed and it's 
each specific ambulance isn't exactly like the other one. There, you know, there's just it's it's not like a um, you know a vehicle where it's it's uh, more generic. There's you know one has a different bin here or a different um, device there, but um, they're very close and comparable. And he reviewed that with the the city purchasing agent, and we came up with the best price. Okay. Available here. I asked this in finance here about a month ago, and I just pose it here again at this point in time, seeing some time has passed. Seeing that we're putting the manufacturer, Pierce, this is a parent company, right, putting them under such duress to get this ambulance out in almost half the time, probably 40% less time than they typically would construct this ambulance, do we have any way of knowing whether we're paying a premium as if we would order it and wait 10 months? Do we have any way of knowing whether we're paying a premium? Well, I think we're, we're looking at four vendors here that all gave us a price. I don't believe we're paying a premium for that. They have a construction process, and certain vendors are able, because of their size, to, to move that process forward and insert people, uh, different purchasers, into the mix. And um, maybe Deputy Chief Sharp can comment on that process. But no, we do not believe the cost of the vehicles was compromised by doing it this way. Okay. It's a it's a more rushed process than we normally like to, to, to see, but um, we believe that we're going to get to the proper result here. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, Alderman Hasselt, Ver Hasselt, you're you are correct. Normal build time on an ambulance would be approximately nine to ten months, and we're going to be actually setting up the whole service in seven and hoping to do this construction in five months. I think that the comparable numbers here bear out the fact that uh, there's no premium being paid here that for the shortened timeline. Uh, all of these manufacturers told me that they do in their production schedule build in some time for certain things that may come up and they would use some of that time, they call it a pipeline as things are flowing through their pipeline. They said there, is, there are some slots built in there for certain types of emergency situations. Okay. That's a good explanation. Um, I guess the numbers here wouldn't really indicate anything like a premium just because it would all be relative to the same time constraint. So they, they might not be the best indicator of whether there's a premium or not, but I appreciate your explanation. Um, just one last question that I wanted to know. The original resolution that was put forth was for $500,000 ambulance equipment expense. Correct? And if I'm seeing this right now, we're at 540000 Am I understanding, am I following this along correctly? Are we, and I'm not trying to do one of these gotchas, here we are, I'm trying to point this out, but I'm, am I following this right that we're $40,000 beyond what we originally planned in that $500,000 resolution here from a month ago? I would say that, yes, we're beyond by $40,000. That was a number that... Uh, when looking at the top dollar possible scenarios for all this peripheral equipment, we use that, that amount um, at the recommendation of Mr. Gephardt to make sure that we are totally covered. I do not believe that we'll be spending that amount. I believe that we'll be spending uh, much closer to the $500,000 number. If not, I don't know if I should say it, but possibly even a little bit below. Based on what you know, and you've been involved in this, Deputy Chief Sharp, quite a bit, are we leaning towards the lease process or the purchase? At this time, I don't know that. Uh, one okay. of the things that drove this was the fact that interest rates went up a little bit over one half percent about six weeks ago, just when we were getting into this. I've been watching it. They've started to come back down. Um, that final decision uh, would be made along uh, with. Uh, Mr. Gephardt's recommendation and with the oversight of the Finance Committee will make the right decision there and we will do comparables with several different leasing agencies before a final decision would be made. Vice President Bourne. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. My question has been answered. Thank you. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we have four proposals here and, and I don't need to see them on letterhead. But if an alderman would want to see more proof that, that that these numbers are valid. If they contact you, would you be able to give them that proof? I have all that information in my office, and I'd be glad to do it. I'll be in my office tomorrow morning from shortly after 7 o'clock till approximately 4. Thank you. Thank you, Gentleman Bannerwheel. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. We are going to call for the vote on 756. Alderman Clavinus. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I didn't want, uh, just before we vote, I just want to say that if we listen to the people in regard to the police issue and, and authorizing $175,000 more, we should be listening to the people who have also spoken on this issue and have said that they don't want this to be done in the city of Sheboygan. It's an extra service and we're paying for it and people are moving out because of that as well. Uh, so I will vote no. Thank you, Alderman Clayness. We will call a roll on 756. Please do. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clayunas? No. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. Back to 743. I need a motion to suspend. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to suspend. Is there a sec second? Um, any objection to that? There is none. Please proceed. I would make a motion to uh, put, put the resolution upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. I think we've had the Alderman rehearsal. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to pose the question to Alderman Hannah. Uh, being on the finance committee, the, the wording here is to enter into a contract for the purchase of three ambulance vehicles. Is that wording appropriate or should we be looking at more appropriating the funds because we're technically not asking them to go forward with entering into a contract, correct? Purchase or lease appropriations for the per uh, the, the wording coming out of the finance committee is purchase slash lease. Purchase. That's Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for point of clarification, a purchase is a lease. It just isn't purchased by the city. It's purchased by a leasing agent, and the city then pays the leasing agent annual or monthly payments. The language should be appropriate for either. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We will call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, no. and Manny. Aye. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. Ordinance introduced 10, 757, lies over. Matters laid over 11, 629, and RO, RO number 1660708 oh, by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning of the Wells Fargo parking lot between Washington Court and Wisconsin Avenue from class neighborhood residential six to class neighborhood commercial classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Serta. Aye. Gisha. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 630, RO number 1670708 oh, by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning for property located at 507 Washington Court from Class Neighborhood Residential 6 to Class Neighborhood Commercial Classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. It's motion and second under discussion. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. Just like to commend the group that's uh, working on that piece of property. The property's been rehabbed and it's a beautiful piece of property. And what they intend to do there is the beginning of really improving the long term viability of the Washington Court area of District 2. Thank you, Alderman Bauk. Being no more discussion, please call the roll. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Serta. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 647, resolution number 440708 by Alderman Hannah, Boren, Clayunas, Bout, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 07 budget. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Wangaman, Boren, 
Aye. Falk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 15 ayes. Chief Clerk, did you want to say something? Please come up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, the uh, members of the Common Council. I believe uh, this document uh, dealt with the uh, purchase of rifles. I wish to uh, say thank you uh, for that. Uh, I wish to say thank you to uh, the Mayor for this. Uh, you're the one who addressed this in a discussion we had with you many months back. Uh, we had talked about rifles and Alderman uh, Boren, I believe you also had, you know, were somewhat concerned about our officers, <clears throat> excuse me, having to purchase some of our own rifles. Uh, this was an issue that we tried to uh, equip our vehicles with rifles and uh, as we left it go, Mr. Mayor, you brought it up several times and I believe uh, your effort on this is what led us to uh, this decision here today. So. For the safety of our officers and for our community, I, I wish to say thank you for that. Thank you, Chief. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. We did. Oh, we did. I'm sorry. 648, resolution number 450708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Bauk, Gisha, and Clayunas, rescinding resolution number 140708, and to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'm going to be voting no on this uh, transfer. However, uh, I want to bring out for the people that are watching that this, this $300,000 is going to be tracked under a special revenue fund for the ambulance services. So this is going to be a way that we can track this $300,000 and I think it's appropriate that it goes under ambulance services rather than under the uh, fire department budget. So as I said, I'm going to vote no, but because I don't support the transfer, but it is good that it is going into a special revenue fund if it's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vice President Boren. There being no more discussion, please call the roll. For Hasselt? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Thank you. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? No. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Vanderwill? Aye. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. 657, General Ordinance Number 150708 by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending the code so as to change the TO of the Finance Department Accounting Division. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to put this general ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhassel. 15 ayes. Motion carries. General Ordinance number 160708 by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer amending the code so as to change the TO of the Department of Public Works. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to put this general ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. <coughs> there is none. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, and Wangaman. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, each one will be referred to the appropriate committee indicated, except 763, a resolution by Alderman Hannah and Meyer ordering a hearing on the vacation of discontinuance of a portion of North 26th Street adjacent to lots three and four, Smith Garden Subdivision, First National Bank of Manitowoc. President Hanna, just put it upon his passage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a <clears throat> motion that the resolution be put upon his passage. There's a motion and second under discussion. 
There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney uh, 765, submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. Thank you, Attorney Adams. That will be referred to law and licensing. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Stand adjourned.